In the dramatic decades of the Cold War, millions of people from around the world began obsessing over the sky. They anxiously listened to news reports about the latest satellites, rockets and astronauts as two nuclear superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, were locked in a technological race to prove which nation could seize control of outer space. However, the very real fear of another atomic bomb appearing from the clouds above people's heads meant that the winner of this competition held the fates of millions in their hands. In the final months of World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union both aimed to capture German rocket engineers and their work. Nazi Germany had created the V-2 rocket, which was the most advanced rocket to date. The space race began with the hunt for these scientists and their inventions. Under Operation Paperclip, American forces brought approximately 1,600 German scientists to the US to work on military and research projects. Their ranks included Werner von Braun, who had led the V-2's creation and later helped to build the US space program. Likewise, Soviet forces seized equipment and engineers for their own secret projects. At military bases and labs in both countries, the earliest research focused mainly on the mechanics of missiles. Both governments saw rockets as a key military focus as the missiles could carry nuclear weapons to distant targets. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, both countries tested rockets to improve their power and weight capacity. The Soviet Union started work on the R-7 Semyorka, the first long-range missile. The United States developed Redstone and Vanguard rocket systems. Focus then shifted as engineers used those rocket designs to think about what the rockets could carry into orbit. Political leaders treated space as a new arena to show their nation's strength and superiority, and the rivalry between the US and the Soviet Union intensified. On the 4th of October 1957, the Soviet Union sent the world's first satellite into orbit around Earth. Sputnik 1 was launched on a modified version of the R-7 Samyorka missile. The satellite sent back a steady beep that proved it had reached space. Its launch surprised many. Newspapers called it a Soviet win, and US officials feared it meant new military threats. In November the same year, Sputnik 2 carried a dog named Laika into orbit. Laika did not survive. She died within hours from overheating and stress. However, the Soviet team still showed that living beings could survive launch into space. At the same time, US satellites failed again and again, with rockets exploding on the launch pad. In January 1958, the United States finally sent up Explorer 1. The satellite launch succeeded, but the Soviets had already captured the world's attention. The US government then passed new education laws and provided more support for science training in schools and universities in an effort to get ahead. Over the next years, Soviet engineers set new records. Luna 2 reached the moon in 1959, and Luna 3 took photos of the moon's far side later that year. In April 1961, Yuri Gagarin became the first human in space. His single orbit lasted about 90 minutes and it gave the Soviet Union a major publicity win. People across the USSR celebrated, and US leaders had to look again at their own program. At the start of the 1960s, NASA focused on sending Americans into space and building the systems needed for longer missions. In May 1961, Alan Shepard completed a suborbital flight aboard Freedom 7. While shorter than Gagarin's journey, it showed that the United States had entered the era of human spaceflight. Later that year, President John F. Kennedy addressed a joint session of Congress and committed the United States to landing a man on the moon before 1970. His speech placed immense pressure on NASA and launched the Apollo program. Engineers, astronauts and technicians began preparing for a sequence of missions that would build toward that goal. The Gemini program supported this aim with a focus on space travel techniques. Astronauts practiced orbital docking and undertook lengthy missions in low Earth orbit. In March 1965, the Soviets added another achievement. Cosmonaut Alexei Leonov made the first spacewalk during the Voskhod 2 mission. US scientists raced to catch up and only three months later, in June 1965, American astronaut Ed White performed a spacewalk on the Gemini 4 mission. Later that year, Gemini 6A and 7 demonstrated successful orbital rendezvous. Each success laid the foundation for the larger and more advanced Apollo missions. 
Scientists tested the lunar module, perfected rocket stages and improved communication systems. In December 1968, Apollo 8 became the first crewed spacecraft to orbit the Moon. The mission sent back iconic images of Earth from lunar space, reinforcing public support for the program. Finally, on the 20th of July 1969, the United States achieved the ultimate goal in the space race. Apollo 11 landed on the Moon, and Neil Armstrong became the first human to set foot on its surface. Buzz Aldrin joined him shortly afterward, while Michael Collins remained in lunar orbit. The moment was broadcast live to a global audience estimated at over 600 million people. Armstrong's words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, became permanently associated with the achievement. American efforts had achieved Kennedy's goal. In just over eight years, NASA had gone from launching a short suborbital flight to completing a full lunar landing. The Soviet lunar program remained active behind the scenes, but never succeeded in landing a cosmonaut on the moon. Its heavy lift N1 rockets suffered catastrophic failures, which ended any hope of a successful Soviet crewed landing. After the success of Apollo 11, enthusiasm for moon landings began to fade. Later missions carried out more scientific research, but they lacked the drama and global attention of the first landing. Apollo 13, launched in April 1970, failed to reach the moon due to an onboard explosion, but the crew returned safely in a widely publicised rescue effort. Public interest shifted, and political leaders began to question the high costs of further missions. In 1972, Apollo 17 became the last mission that sent astronauts to the lunar surface. The program had achieved its primary objective, but national priorities had changed. The Vietnam War, economic concerns and domestic unrest took much of the government's attention. Soviet planners had faced repeated setbacks in their moon program. Instead of competing directly with Apollo, they turned their focus to orbital space stations. Missions that involved Salyut stations allowed cosmonauts to remain in space for long periods and enabled them to conduct research and test endurance. The Lunokhod program, which sent remote-controlled rovers to the moon, achieved several robotic milestones. During the mid-1970s, diplomatic relations between the two superpowers began to improve. In July 1975, American and Soviet spacecraft docked in orbit during the Apollo-Soyuz test project. The commanders, Thomas Stafford and Alexei Leonov, exchanged greetings and carried out joint experiments. It marked the first international crewed space mission. In later decades, international cooperation expanded projects such as the International Space Station united space agencies from multiple nations. Technology developed during the space race laid the foundation for the Space Shuttle, the Russian Mir station and other shared ventures. The era of direct competition had ended. The space race had been won and its impact continued to influence space exploration for generations to come.